Welcome everybody to our new show, Gaming Evolved. If you like shooters, RPGs, loot and shoots, any of the types of games, we're here to discuss them all. We have uh, we have Ollie here, our co-host, and myself. So. And uh, today we're going to talk about our background in the video games and what video games we like to play and what has brought us to why we want to do this show. So... Um, I guess we'll just kick it off. I don't know. Do we have like an intro or anything at this point? We eventually will. This is just that intro. <laughs> I'm like just intro thing there. to get it get it launched. I got to work on the graphics and stuff. This is pretty uh, low key. Yep. All right. Cool. So, uh, just to kick things off, um, Ollie, you know what? I'll kick it to you. Uh, of course. Give us. Uh, so, what got? What first got you into uh, video games? Yeah. So I think like everybody else, that's. Uh, around our age um i my first video game was super mario brothers 3 uh that kicked it off with regular nintendo um yeah. played a bunch of different games excite bike <laughs> um zelda stuff like that um all different stuff uh and then i would say n64 really kicked it off for me um big into goldeneye and huge into perfect dark i think was my my big ones. I mean, I played a ton of um, Zelda Ocarina of Time too, and Jet Force Gemini, to name kind of a few. Um, mm -hmm. But G Goldeneye and Perfect uh, Perfect Dark were like hours wise were like a lot of a lot of hours. Um, so definitely the first person shooter genre. That's kind of what kicked it off for me. Um, I did play a lot of Zelda. That was kind of my um, rpg thing for a little while um i beat it with only three hearts like that's one of the only games i went back and like beat it again because i love the game so much even after i had finished it wait which uh which zelda are you talking about ocarina of time ocarina of time okay yeah yeah and then uh the other one i would say i spent the most hours in in a, in a different uh genre was Org uh, ogre battle 64 which was unbelievable yep. um i spent hundreds of hours on that game yeah so that that's kind of more the strategy RPG side, which I get into a little. Like I've played a lot of StarCraft, um, Warcraft, uh, those kind of games. So, and then obviously Xbox and stuff like that is really where I probably played the most hours. Right, Xbox and Xbox 360, the Halos, um, and and so on from there. Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to get into like playing now, or do you want to start your? What where did you start off? You're more of a Sega guy, right? Yeah, so my uh, my influence uh, came actually actually it wasn't Sega per se. That's uh, I think um, I think that's what um, got me more into it. But mm -hmm. um, so initially, my cousin got me into um, he had a Game Boy and he had Super Mario Land, yep. and that was the first game I ever played. And then I used to watch him. Uh, there was a time when I was about four to five. They like we were living with my relatives, and uh, he had Nintendo and Super Nintendo, and uh, he would play. You know, Link to the Past was one of them that yep. he'd play all the I'm time. Right Nintendo, yep. Um, which I beat that a couple times. But like the the first game I ever played was Super Mario Land on the original Game Boy, mm -hmm. and then when we moved out and moved back home. Uh, my parents bought me a Game Boy. Yep. And I played that. Um, I also got, I got, uh, what was it? Link's Awakening was my second game I ever okay. got. Beat that game when I was five years old. Gotcha. Love that game. That was, <laughs> that kind of introduced me to like the RPGs and, um, cause it, I mean, that's an adventure kind of a deal, Dungeon Dwell or whatever you want to say, but yeah, that game got me into it. Um, so I was I actually started out as Nintendo more. Mm -hmm. uh, I also had a Roger Clemens game that was amazing, baseball game, mm -hmm. worst graphics in the world, but it was awesome. Um, but then my parents, when I was six, they got me a Sega Genesis for Christmas. Yep. And that's what got me into Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, I was six or seven, and I collected like, you know, all the games. I like it. I knew all the secrets of any game from Sonic 1 to Sonic and Knuckles. Yeah. Uh, I played all the stupid Echo the Dolphin games. <laughs> um, what's another one? Altered, uh, uh, which, which we'll call it, uh, not Altered Fire. 
um, Altered Beast, and uh, okay. what's another one? Mortal Kombat, all that stuff. So, anyways, yeah. so Sega really got me into like full on. I played N64. I never owned an N64, but that. You never uh, owned N64? I didn't know that. Nope, I didn't own that. Um, okay. I had friends. I mean, you know, everybody else had them. Yeah. So, uh, I had I had Sega. Uh, I had Game Boy. Um, and then, <clears throat> then we got, um, Xbox and GameCube. So, um, I think the, the first person shooter for me didn't show up until Halo. That's when okay. I started to get the shooters. I didn't play GoldenEye as much. I played a lot of Star Fox. I didn't play, uh, Perfect Dark as much. So like mm-hmm. first person shooters for me just came a little bit later. I love gotcha. those games, but I just never got into it. So, um, but Halo really that cemented me into first person shooters and that changed the way I played forever. So gotcha. Um I would uh I'd probably leave it there in terms of influences, but yeah. Um Yeah, one but, I kinda of forgot because G- GameCube you're right, but beyond GameCube, I totally forgot. Uh probably like just speaking on pure hours wise, Pokemon was like blue. I had Pokemon. Oh, uh, I keep. Oh my god, how did I forget and that? Yellow. I know that's what I'm, yeah. I'm thinking to myself. I spent so many hours uh, with my cousin Dan and playing those games. He got red, I got blue. Um, yeah, and we we went nuts on those games. Um, Me I and my still sister think... got red and blue. Okay, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still think the uh, that was the original. It's gonna sound funny, but that was the original like not looter shooter because it wasn't a shooter, but that was the original loot based game um to me because even mm-hmm. though people i don't think people think of it like that but the pokemon were the loot it's a very similar loop to like what you do even in destiny you go out you do a mission for a certain gun you get it it may not have the perfect stats you can upgrade the gun like all these kind of things right i feel like that was like the delay the that feeling of capturing a pokemon right and like leveling it up and getting yeah. new moves on it and stuff like that is very much the core game loop of like looters and then i didn't really play like a quote-unquote looter until like division or destiny and stuff like that like technically you know what i mean um PSO? but it oh yeah pso yeah true good point on the game hey, so we played that yep um so i think, all, I think overall we one yeah i think overall we just there's so many influences that we have like mm-hmm. combined that it's just it's like i mean totally i forgot fantasy star online yeah I forgot Pokemon. I still play Pokemon to this day. I play, uh, was it Crystal? I love okay. Crystal. That's my all-time favorite Pokemon game. It's one of my favorite games of all time. That came out when I was, I don't know, probably around the same. It was close to around the same time Halo came out. Okay. Um, but I like, did Yellow, and then I played. Funny enough, I, I played a lot of Pokemon Snap actually. Um, I hated that game. That game I actually did not like. I really enjoyed that for some reason. It's totally off. Like, I wouldn't like it now, but I had a blast with it. But, yeah, the Pokemon thing, I don't know why. I I lost interest once they added a bunch, which doesn't really make sense. You would think you'd continue to get into it. You know what I mean? But, like, those those core 150, um, that was was it for me. I loved it. But I I still kind of... uh, I want to almost go back. You know what I mean? Like, I don't yeah. even know if I want to play like Sword and Shield. Is that, are those the new ones, Sword and Shield? Yeah. So I actually, uh, speaking of that, I actually beat Sword recently. I got, I went through mm-hmm. it all, played, uh, played through the whole thing to the very end. How many Pokemon are there now? Uh, I think it's like they, in the eight hundreds now. Are they all in so the they, game, or are they take no. them out? Okay. No. So that was a big thing. That was a big issue when Sword and Shield initially, when they announced it and everything in the Pokedex. Mm-hmm. So past gen three there's this thing called the national pokemon decks okay. i'm getting super nerdy about this but yep. basically it was because they're adding so many pokemon that they had to um so you would have like the game itself the pokemon in the game and yep. then there's the pokemon in like johto kanto so gen one gen two uh hoenn which is gen three those are the different maps in other words the different uh uh regions okay so what they started doing was that you could collect them on the national decks, but like there was also a Pokedex for like the specific region. And so going forward, that's what all the games had to make up for like, you know, who's going to, there are people that will collect like 600, 700 Pokemon, but it takes forever. Gotcha. But the games can't handle that many. I don't know. Different that many. I mean, that'd just be insane. So 
in Sword and Shield, they took that away and they right. went with we're just doing a 400 Pokemon Pokedex and you can collect them. There we're leaving we can so you can still collect all of them, but mm -hmm. like it's not like a specific emphasis on the national Pokedex. Gotcha. So it was kind of like there was a lot of blowback on that. I think they're trying to figure out a way to incorporate to that. Yeah, they're gonna do DLCs, which that'll be like one of the first times Pokemon has had like DLC to their their game. Gotcha, um, gotcha. But it's it's totally uh it Sword and Shield kind of was like resemblance of the earlier generations for me. Mm -hmm. Like I, I went through it. I, I was like, this is entertaining. It was good, but the grind wasn't there. And there, you could go through. Um, you didn't have to raise your Pokemon like you know, like in the first gen, you had to like, you know, raise them uh, levels wise and stuff to right. you know be able to battle. It wasn't like that this time. It was more you get like this thing called experience share, and it. Um, it levels all the Pokemon at the same time when you battle, which is kind of hmm. a bummer. Okay. Um, the cool thing they did was they introduced an open world kind of a deal called the wild area where you could catch Pokemon um, in the wild. You could see them in the wild. You could run from them. You can approach them. You can you yeah. know catch whatever you want based on your levels and stuff. And they're all different areas. They have all different weather patterns. It was pretty cool. Okay. So they're going, they're taking a step towards the open world thing, which I think they severe, they need to do at this point. Yeah, I've there's been, a couple, like I, we talking about the Star Wars stuff, like there's just a couple of genres that like just go, just go open world. Like yeah. It's a it, billion combo. It, it's the best idea. I don't know it, why it makes no sense. deliver on it, right? Yeah, it, it makes no sense. It literally like Pokemon is made for that. And mm -hmm. it's like, we still can't do that yet. The game, the whole basis of the game is... The, even gen one the first ones we played was you play with your friends you played with dan i played right. with my sister we yep. trade pokemon why can't you do that in the games now when we have the capability through the game it's, boy it's link just, remember that thing yeah oh fuck that thing that thing sucked <laughs> how many pokemon uh, died in the transfer just like disappeared forever oh my so god many. i hated that thing um <laughs> but it was uh yeah, so not to get off track with uh, the Pokemon stuff and my nerd crap about Pokemon, but like uh, Pokemon Sword, I would highly Sword and Shield, I would highly recommend. Gotcha. Um, yeah, yeah. But it's uh, yeah, it's definitely overwhelming with all the new Pokemon stuff. Like, yep. I'm I'm primarily a Gen One, Gen Two guy. Like, mm -hmm. I just like the originals. I don't Gen Three. I played. I got. That's when I was like, yeah, I'm I'm kind of done with Pokemon. Okay. So this kind of got me back in yeah so let's jump ahead to kind of today like what do, what do you play today i mean oh, i know what you play but you know what tell i the, play tell the people tell the people like, what are your interests uh, now? so right now um i mean i'm not gonna say i'm going for a specific genre at, so to speak i'll just list off some of the games i've been playing mm -hmm. um you know we've been playing call of duty uh war zone we just got back into rainbow six siege which is one of our our favorite uh a lot of hours in that game one of our favorite games we've been playing that for years um but i've been playing a lot of fire emblem awakening uh i was recently playing fire emblem three houses which is on switch which is an amazing game um what else am i playing is I awakening just got... an older one yeah so okay. awakening was on the 3ds gotcha. it kind of got when fire emblem came out it came out, it was in the Japan and they came out on Super Smash Brothers mm -hmm. in the US. And then they kind of debuted a couple games on GameCube, but they didn't do well. Gotcha. And then this title was basically their make or break it. And it, it's their most popular title. I would argue it's their most gotcha. popular game. It got them back into it. So I've had it. I just haven't finished it. So I'm going through it now. Uh, what else have I been playing? I just finished Pokemon Sword. Mm -hmm. um playing playing kotor uh just to go through it but um and then what else uh and then super metroid i'm just playing through that again because i yeah you, you were know. saying that this morning what um, do you have then on I, switch so i have it on switch on the the nintendo switch online thing so gotcha. and another one i've been kind of testing out that i might get into is dragon quest uh oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. those games i i like a lot so yeah uh was it uh nag muna what rpg there's an rpg for a dragon uh quest but we definitely have a lot of rpg influence in our games um 
So I'll, what are you playing these days? I know you you have a little bit. Uh, so I mo- have more like a, I play a little bit of retro. I mix between retro and new games. Ollie, you kind of have a different, uh, you play a lot of PC games, whereas yes. I don't. So yeah, I base I have Xbox and PC. Um, basically I have a, I have a switch too. So I've played, um, in the last year or so I played, uh, Breath of the Wild. I wanted, that's basically why I got the switch. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, I've dabbled in uh, a couple other Switch games, um, some stuff to bring me back to like the Golden Sun days. Um, yep. Speaking of RPGs, oh, like Tactics yeah, great, Order and stuff great like that. Game. Um, so Mercenary yep. Wings, I think, is the one I was playing. Um, I don't have, it's not my main interest, so I don't have the time to dive deep into them. I'm thinking what was about, the game you just said? Mercenary um, Merc- what? Mercenary Wings. What's it's that? basically Golden Sun, like the same thing. It's like that. Oh, kind of, on it's uh, just Steam? Like a, yeah. Uh no no it's on it's on Switch it was on like the Switch online store. Really? Yeah, I mean if you're interested, I, I think there's mm. a few. Um, it's it's like the same exact thing, just different storyline. Uh, so that so that was fun. Um, I've dabbled uh on the Switch recently with Octopath Traveler, Tra- Traveler, which I know I told you about, which yep. is neat. Um, that's more like a standard kind of RPG RPG turn based kind of thing. Did you do the demo or did you play? I did. I it? did the demo. Uh, I'm thinking about buying it because I I did enjoy it, um, just kind of as like a before I go to bed kind of game to, to yeah. doze off. But yeah, I would say the biggest difference, um, for me and stuff that I do that you don't, because like we both play Rainbow Six, we play Warzone, mm-hmm. um, we both played a lot of hours of like Division and Destiny and Destiny Two and Division Two, yep. um, and all those games, and I I do love those games. My big thing now is I, I'm really interested in um, like early access games and and getting in early on alphas and stuff like that um, to different projects. I mean the mainstream games I'm playing right now. Um, I've played a lot of Valorant recently, which yep. has been a lot of fun. Um, I play. Which you gotta start streaming, right? Yeah. Well, right now actually it's broken. <laughs> <laughs> there's oh, nice. like a there's like an anti-cheat thing that is messing up my computer so i gotta uh um in i have like a support ticket to get that back up um i'll probably stream a little bit of it i'm not very good at it um i just really enjoy it um because it is kind of like a mix between the hero shooters like rainbow six and overwatch and it's basically on like a counter-strike it's like a skin for a counter-strike basically um yep. so i have not played a lot of counter-strike but i'm enjoying learning kind of the ins and outs of it so um I, if i can get that back up i will be streaming that the i would say the most amount of hours i've played in the last couple of years have been with um with escape from tarkov uh like a hardcore first person shooter a little bit of survival elements to it which i like um and that goes that that's still i think they consider it a beta now i got in when it was like alpha um or pre-alpha i the term's evade me when you have so many updates and stuff like that i've been playing it for like two or three years uh three or four years i think now um but so that's my that's my big one but i i've been i like i tell you all the time i do a ton of like pre-alpha beta free stuff through steam and that's kind mm-hmm. of like a, like a big joy of mine i love trying stuff out so like we were talking a lot about um pokemon uh i've probably played 30 or 40 hours of temtem which is yep. kind of a newer one that's still in alpha or beta um it hasn't released yet um that's really cool that has a little bit it, it's taken a spin on pokemon where it's like you, you actually play two on two um mm-hmm. like two two of your pets or uh creatures on two um so there's a they whole, have, other, uh, whole other yeah like, they have that in pokemon now oh okay yeah so there's a whole other spin on kind of how they interact with each other and you know the elemental stuff um same (laughs) same kind of stuff as pokemon it's 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 very similar to pokemon just a little a little different take on it um Mm -hmm. so i put a lot of hours of that um there's uh a bunch of early access stuff what have i i'm I'm looking forward to this game called marauder um it's like super early access Oh, i've heard that game yeah it's on like discord it's not even like released through steam it's like a it's kind of a they're trying they're taking influences from escape from tarkov but it's a space pirating game mm-hmm. um it's super it's super rough right now but it's it's, it's like it's steve cool. thieves, thieves kind of a deal no 
closer to Tarkov, um, but you have like a ship, so there'll be a ship aspect to it. It's tough to tell. Oh. It's it's more just what they're explaining about it because it's tough to tell what's going to be because it's real early. Like you can basically yeah. like go out and it kind of breaks, <laughs> but it's like a first person shooter that has like ship elements to it. Oh, um, that's cool. So that's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's. I mean, that's it for me. I mean, I, that's that's my. I'm always surfing you know uh steam early access and stuff like that there's a game stones hard stone shard sorry that's like a kind of a turn-based kind of thing it's unique um old school graphics um you know that's fun and i and i still dabble i don't have a ton of time but i still do dabble with uh with like real-time strategy games and stuff like that so i still play I, i try to play around with stellaris every once in a while they are billions is really fun um that's kind of more starcrafty uh I still i still think you have like fire emblem i mean i that's, would that... i just like like i'm naming right now i just don't I, fire emblem would fit in the realm of like mercenaries wings for me and that's yeah, why i don't mm. want to pay money for it because it's just i would play it a little bit and enjoy it i don't have the time to sink into a game like that that's why yeah. even octopath traveler i'm like i don't know if i'm gonna get it because if it was free, I'd dabble with it, you know what I mean, and see how far yep. I got, and maybe I would get addicted and play. But all those games, like, I'd rather play Valorant and Escape from Tarkov, like, for my chunk of gaming, you know what I mean? Like, if, mm-hmm. I, if I'm going to stream for three hours, like, 90% of that is going to be one of those games, or an early access title that I'm trying out, like a Temtem yep. kind of thing, you know what I mean, as those come out. But I don't know, I just don't, I get to, like, Mercenaries Wings, I've already kind of left. Cause like I played it, you know, for maybe like two weeks, um, maybe like a couple hours a week, you know what I mean? But then you get too deep into it where like, I kind of forget the story and I just lose interest. Like it's, it's a good, um, it's a good nostalgia kick. I just don't have the time to put into it. Like I want to, you know what I mean? So spending 60 bucks, uh, to maybe lose it halfway just for me, doesn't seem worth it. That's, I mean, and that's my big thing. Like I, like I said, the early access in this a lot of the steam stuff is like either free or it's like 10 bucks you know what i mean so that you can kind of you can play them if you like them but they're not done yet you i leave them for six months and then there'll be three or four patches and then you go back and try them again i really enjoy that whole thing so that's kind of so around that i'm just looking at it right now just images and so i so i can see what you're saying it's like tactics org mm-hmm. blended with fire emblem I mean, yeah, that Fire yeah, Emblem is the exactly. same. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is more like Tactics Org in terms of like the overhead uh, graphics and stuff like that. Graphics and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yep. But like, I mean, Fire Emblem is kind of the same, same kind of deal. You're moving people. You're trying to, you know, take out the the boss or whatever objective, and it's just like, yeah, you, you know, everyone has different like uh, axes, lances, sword. It's yeah, it's right I up that it. alley. Yeah. That's why. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think Tactics Org is why I got into uh why i got into fire emblem and then right. we had the game boy advance games um growing up mm-hmm. we just ended up with them and they were awesome and i didn't get the gamecube games and i i didn't play it again until a couple of years ago when i got awakening and i was like oh my god this game i love this like i yeah the strategy rpg like it's not just like hack and slash sometimes hack and slash can get boring at times yeah but, so uh wrapping it up is there anything on the horizon that you're looking forward to like any big releases uh, or anything you've heard of um not initially um i mean the pokemon dlz i'm kind of int- intrigued by it to see where they're going with it like if they're going to keep making it open world yeah um yeah i haven't See the thing is, uh, Halo Infinite is probably another one. I'm yeah. more, I'm kind of waiting a little bit until the new consoles, the new consoles, just because I don't want to. I don't know if I really want to buy. It. Like, there's not a lot of releases coming until then, anyways. But there's not, like, I'm sure once that comes out, I'm gonna want to play Halo again. Like, that's gonna, yeah, no, that's I, gonna take up all my time. Absolutely. Um, but in the meantime, I'm just gonna keep playing like the Fire Emblem games and. You know, Warzone Six, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, what about you? Is there any games coming out that you're like? I mean, some of uh, my like, I, I get excited about Tarkov. Uh, it, I play in like waves. It's hard to understand for people who don't play it. Yeah, but it wipes basically every like three to six months with a big new yep. update, and um, 
you start over, which doesn't sound fun, but it it really is for that type of game. So um, there's a big wipe oh, coming. In, there's a big wipe and update coming. They I want to say within the month uh, or a month or two. They usually I mean it's early access early access beta development is always behind. You know what I mean? But um, yeah. there's some really big changes being made. So I'm looking forward to that because I really haven't played a lot of Tarkov in the last like four months three or four months um mm-hmm. but then when i get into it i play a lot you know what i mean um yeah kind of go through the new content um valorant i'm excited to play again because i've been off for a week because of this whole nonsense with the, the vanguard um anti-cheat the only one uh that i can think of off the top of my head that i am interested in that is coming out is i i'm intrigued by this cyberpunk um this the cyberpunk game coming out yeah, that's another um, one I've been uh, been looking at as well. So I'll probably let it come out and watch some streams a little bit to get a feel for what it actually is because I've seen some of the gameplay, but I still can't tell. Um, it looks really good, but I, I just can't fully tell what's gameplay and what's not, if that makes sense. Like, I can't really tell yeah. what you're doing yet, um, but it looks almost like a... It looks almost like a futuristic Grand Theft Auto with way more RPG elements than just, yep. like the shooter like nonsense not nonsense but mayhem that gta is you know what i mean it looks like it focuses more on the skill progression and rpg elements but in that kind of setting where you're just kind of free to roam this gigantic place um so that interests me um i'm definitely gonna keep an eye on it you know i mean that's gonna be a full release i don't buy a ton of full release like 60 dollars games anymore because i'm doing a lot of the little stuff but um but that one that one definitely intrigues me and obviously halo i'm just like a halo nostalgia guy like i want to see what they do with it yeah that i mean halo would be a big is a big one um yeah cyberpunk's another one i've been kind of curious about to see where that goes just because it's gotten so much press and everything yeah. and then anything um, star wars if they can come out with some huge yeah, game sooner or later would be awesome you know yeah like a higher or, open world or something or the yeah, next one in order who knows even like i i was saying this the other day even just a kotor remake just straight up remake. Yeah, someone just like goes a, like a um, non-affiliated group that was doing a full KOTOR remake um, with sick graphics, and I think that got shut down. Um, yeah. The, so I doubt they're doing that. It looked unbelievable. There was like a couple scenes of them walking around Taurus. Um, oh, that's cool. And it looked unbelievable. It was like in Unreal 4, like Unreal Engine. You know what I mean? It looked awesome. Yeah. Um, I would have uh, definitely played that, but yeah. Yeah, that that's kind of, I mean... I, in terms of Star Wars, that's what I'm waiting for, but we'll see. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, there's not, like I said, not a lot that I'm looking towards. Um, just playing some of the games that's already come out. Outer Worlds is one other one that I might be uh, getting my hands into okay. uh, in the near future. But besides that, Halo, that's that's on my mind. Yeah. Cool. Until uh, these new consoles come out. So, uh, I think that wraps up our first episode. Uh, yeah, you know, it's everyone, the foundation, yeah. Yeah, so uh, thank you everybody for uh, joining us. We're going to be, so basically the show, we're going to be talking about video game news going forward, some of the stuff that we're playing, um, some of the stuff that's going on in the industry. Uh, And then obviously because of our influences that we talked about, you know, I might have different gameplay that I'm going through. Ollie's going to talk about more of what he's playing. So it'd be cool. Do some reviews and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And some maybe some walkthroughs. And um, we're also going to be rotating host here and there as well. So it won't be just, the, you know, two of us. So you don't have to see our ugly mugs all the time. So uh, that'll be cool, too. Just, to, you know, because we a lot of us and our friends, we have a, a cool gaming community. And, you know, we'd like to share that uh, love with you guys. So uh, thank you all for the support. And, uh, yeah, we're ready to kick this uh, this show off. All right. Later, guys. All right. Later.